drama in the 90s alt rock world. I'm sure a lot of people have already seen the video, but apparently uh, Mr. Pete from Jane's Addiction got in a tussy with Dave Navarro on stage at a show. A lot of the news sites have reported on it, you know, in a news setting and what they've said. Um, There was an Instagram post, I think today or yesterday, from Dave Navarro. And then shortly after that, I believe, a text-based post from the band that they had to take some time off from touring. I don't really know what the situation is in detail, but we're going to be reacting to the video. I'm going to be talking about similar situations, just life as a musician, having personally dealt with situations like this, having personally dealt with uh, substance abuse problems, firsthand, secondhand, seen it at shows, and just, you know, my, I guess, not tips or tricks or anything, but experience that I might have with it. And just, you got to know that when you're playing with the band, you're dealing with people that are often whack have problems have issues and this is what you're gonna get and if you stay for the end maybe we'll get a little uh into some more band fight videos i don't know i have any that i'm gonna look up but you know they're on youtube and i love to react to a good band fight video they're usually very cringe so we're gonna do that together stick around to the end as always thank you guys for the support earlshreds.com or at earlshreds on anything if you want to come to a show appreciate everybody that streams the music check out my music on spotify before we watch the video i always like to do a little uh read from the news like billboard type just to see what as i'm filming this video what kind of has been going on so let's read this is from billboard on september 16th which is today as of me recording this Perry Farrell apologizes to Jane's addiction bandmates for inexcusable behavior after onstage fight. In quotations, I take full accountability for how I chose to handle the situation, the rocker said in a statement to Billboard. Hmm, he takes full accountability. Jane's addiction singer Perry Farrell has apologized to his bandmates for the ugly scene on Friday in Boston, in Boston, when the vocalist attacked guitarist Dave Navarro during a show. This weekend has been incredibly difficult, and after having the time and space to reflect, it is only right that I apologize to my bandmates, especially Dave Navarro fans. See, that's what the problem is. You're messing with a dude that's got his own fan base. When the guitarist doesn't have his own fan base, you can treat him like shit. Uh... Don't ask me how I know that, but I know that. So, yeah, as soon as your guitarist gets a little clout on social media, maybe he does like a shred video that goes viral. He's got maybe he's really good looking. All the chicks want him. Dude, you got to be careful talking that mess, dog, because now his fans are coming at you. I apologize to my bandmates, especially Dave Navarro fans, uh, family and friends for my actions during Friday's show. Farrell said in a statement shared with Billboard. Unfortunately, my breaking point resulted in inexcusable behavior, and I take full accountability for how I chose to handle the situation, Farrell. 65. That's a problem, Mr. You're too old to be doing all this. I consider myself to be too old to be doing all that as a 31-year-old man. Added in the the mea culpa that came several. I don't know what mea culpa really means. I need to look that up. Hold on. An exclamation, an acknowledgement of one's fault or error. Okay, wow, I learned something new every day. My mea culpa that came several days after the shocking scene at the Boston Leader Bank Pavilion when singer attacked Navarro during a performance of Ocean Size. In fan videos of the moment, an agitated feral lunges at Navarro and throws a shoulder into his bandmate before punching the shocked-looking guitarist as two men separate him. Navarro, Stephen Perkins... And Eric Avery. Oh. Dude, hold on. I got to get this fly. Get out of here, fly. Wow. Unbelievable. Stephen Perkins Avery issued a joint statement on Instagram on Monday, apologizing to fans for disturbing scene and for the cancellation of the rest of the reunited band's U.S. tour. Due to a continuing pattern of behavior and the mental health difficulties of our singer Perry Farrell, we have t- come to the conclusion that we have no choice but to discontinue the current U.S. tour. Our concern for his personal health and safety, as well as our own, has left us no alternative. We hope that he will find the help he needs, they continued. I don't know 
So still nothing on if it's substance. It's got to be substance abuse. We deeply regret that we're not able to come through for all the fans who have already bought tickets. There is no solution that would ensure a safe environment on stage or liability to allow us to deliver a great performance on a nightly basis. In addition, a source tells Billboard that Farrell himself is heartbroken by his action. He realizes that he waited too long to prioritize his well-being. His exhaustion and the toll it has taken on both his physical and mental health has gone too far. He had the best of intentions heading out on tour and feels that he let his fans and family down. Saturday, the band issued a statement on an Instagram story. Why do y'all do this on Instagram stories? If I was, if my band ever broke up or I did something that would require a statement, I would never issue it. Maybe I wouldn't. I take that back. Who knows? I might have a cancellation event soon. The entire tour was scotched. Shortly after on stage, Farrell's wife, Eddie LaFarrell, issued a statement about the incident that issued oh, that features some background. Clearly, there had been a lot of tension and animosity between the members. The magic made the band so dynamic. Well, the dynamite was lit. Perry's frustration has been mounting night after night. He felt the stage volume had been extremely loud and his voice was being drowned out by the band. Perry had been suffering from tinnitus and a sore throat every night, but when the audience in the first row started complaining up to Perry, cussing at him that the band was playing too loud and they couldn't hear him, Perry lost it. I don't know about that. That sounds sussy. That sounds like not a good excuse. As the lead singer of the band, he probably could get anything he wants, especially if they're selling tickets in theaters. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't want to speculate, but it's it seems like, I don't know. She also noted that on stage, Jane's bassist Avery put Perry in a headlock and punched him in the stomach three times. Perry was a crazed beast for the next half hour. He finally did not calm down, but did break down and cried and cried. Eric, well, he either didn't understand what de-escalation meant or took advantage of the situation and got in a few cheap shots on Perry. I didn't see that in the video. We're about to watch the video, so... The beloved alt-rock group was formed in Los Angeles in 1985. I love the song with the... the um, you know, it's a hit song. Uh, Been caught stealing with the dog in the bat. Dude, that song's legendary. That... Whoever's artistic choice it was to add the dog barking in the intro is a fucking genius. And I strive for sonic greatness in my songs. Avery was back in the fold again in 2022 after Navarro's absence for two years due to the effects of long COVID. All right, let's watch the video. That's from Billboard. We're up to date. We know what's going on. We know what the news media is saying. I'm not going to read the fake news stream media, but uh, there's Billboard. All right, let's watch this video. Let's react to it. This video is on TikTok. comes from Granberry Backup. I don't know if they took the video, but TikTok is the only place I could find where there wasn't commentary or something. So let's watch this video. Here we go. Starts off, we got Perry having a go at Dave for no reason. Weird. Ladies and gentlemen, Perry Farrell. Ah! Oh, yeah. Yo, bro, what the? Okay, you can see it. Yo, bro, what the fuck are you doing, Perry? I loaned you my dog in the intro of been caught stealing. Now you're going to treat me like this. Ah! Oh! Got him with a one two! Yeah! Hell yeah. It's got to be the road manager. Stop it, motherfucker, you fucking old bastard. Just play the goddamn song. Yo, bro, I'm just trying to solo. Love that Dave's still trying to play the solo, too. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. They should have let him fight. If you're the road manager for a band and they start fighting on stage, just let them fucking fight. I got the audio in. You should be able to hear it. Okay, the band does sound loud, which is sick. Good. <laughs> He's just going, ugh. So, I don't know. It, you know, it's not definitively, to me, looks like he could be on something. He actually does look kind of sober to me. 
He just looks like he's having a freak out and he's mad about something. He's really pissed off. You can tell he's mad. Okay. We're getting heated. Definitely took a little shot at him right there. Okay, and you can hear this. I guess, I don't know who this guy is. Maybe a manager or something. Tell him to stop. I don't know if you can hear it. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just generally pissed off. He lost it now. He does not look like the type of dude that would require that many guys to hold down. TBH. Dave took off the guitar. I don't know. They're dragging him off stage now. So my thoughts on that video, really, honestly, before I had just reacted to it now, I kind of thought it was like, oh, yeah, for sure drugs. But it might, it just, it didn't really look like drug addict. I've seen a lot of drug addicts get in fights and be violent. Um, wow, I'm not proud that I have. Um, but that didn't really look like a substance-fueled fight, more of a mental breakdown due to exhaustion. And uh, if you don't know, the road is really tough. And as a 60-year-old man, um, that's got to be mentally exhausting. And, you know, it's never right to do that. And that was definitely surely embarrassing to the entire band, um, regardless of whether or not it was drugs, alcohol, or just pure exhaustion. If it was truly because he's pissed because he can't hear himself, that ain't nothing that communication can't fix. You could easily just say, hey, audio monitor guys, I can't hear myself. Hey, band, I can't hear myself. Um, it's really causing me problems. Can we figure out? I mean, they got enough money. I mean, it, it's not like a hugely massive financial thing to deal with the audio wise if you're already on tour selling tickets. So, you know, this seems like more communication problems and if you're in a band and if you're in a band on the road you know you have to have open communications number one thing that that really f ruins business relationships regardless of whether or not it's music or any business at all is just communicating if you have a problem um don't let it fester until you blow up and get caught on camera back in the day man it was so much better you could Swallow your emotions, of course, as you should as a man. Do not have feelings. You could swallow your emotions and then let it fester internally and then blow up on an intern later. And there were no cell phones to record it and life was good. But now if you do that, guys, and you freak out and have a public freak out, you're on Reddit um, your pants are down. You're in the street. You remember the Coney 20, 2012 guy. He didn't talk to anybody about what he was going through. Next thing you know, you're in the middle of the street by the beach playing with your willy. So, you know, don't let this stuff fester, guys. When you're mad and depressed, back in the day, you could swallow it. And you still should swallow that and not have feelings. I just want you to know that when your blow when your eventual blow up does happen and especially if you're a musician it's going to be on stage in front of um iPhone cameras and it's going to be you know analyzed by douchebags like me so you know and obviously he didn't want that because he's coming out you know the whole band's posting this like quirky stuff on Instagram band's canceled tours over he's I'm um, deeply embarrassed obviously that's probably him saying that he's probably being honest. He feels like an idiot. Um, so he needs to have communication. But if you're hard ass like me, you just swallow that. And then when your uh, demise is caught on videotape on cell phone footage, 
you know, me, I'm personally going to be like, yeah, that was me. I'm over it. And it's going to happen more and more. And that's part of the act. But if you don't want that to happen, if you don't want that, not that's all I'm BSing right now, guys. But just talk it over with your homies. If you're in a team, if you're in a band and you got, there is a damn, there it is. Y'all see it? I'll get this motherfucker all in his life right now. I'm so fucking done with this fucking fly. It's a teeny one. There it is. Ah! It's a, it's a small one that you can't fucking get. The fat ones, they're big. But just like that, that was a freak out. I'm putting it on this video. I could edit that out, but I'm not. I'm going to leave that in. So people be like, oh, Earl Shreds, he's fake. He's doing shit for cloud. First of all, I don't get any views. Second of all, suck my wee-wee. Uh, third of all, Dave Navarro, you don't deserve that, brother. And you should have, you, I no, what you, you shouldn't have listened. You should never listen to me. But I'm sorry that happened to you, Dave. I appreciate you definitely sticking through on the guitar solo. That's why he's a pro. That's why he's got his own fan base. That shit I said earlier, guys, you're a douchey little singer that don't play an instrument, and you're a pretty boy. Um, you, you need to be careful when your guitar player gets a little clout because then you don't own them no more. And, you know, you can't be – uh, walking in the venue saying, hold my beer, uh, go get me stuff. Uh, don't, you're not allowed to have a mic tonight. Uh, I've been told as a lead guitar player, Hey, walk to the show. Hey man, where's my microphone? Oh, you're not getting one tonight because you say stupid shit on stage. Whoa. Couldn't do nothing about it. Cause I didn't know of clout, but now thanks to the homies that follow me and fuck with the music, they can't fuck with me like that. And you can't fuck with Dave Navarro like that. No, if you're a douchey lead singer, pretty boy, can't let the guitar player get clout. Because then your leverage is gone and you're going to have to find, you're going to have to pick on the drummer or the bass player. But everyone, it's the lead singer never wants to pick on the drummer or the bass player because it was too much of an easy target. And you're going to look like a douchebag. Like, oh, man, why are you, don't fuck with the drummer. Don't fuck with the bass player. Like, uh, like that's like, that's like eating a five course meal in front of a starving child from a third world country. Like, bruh, don't do that. But the lead singer is going to beef with the guitar player, especially if he's good looking. Oh, there's going to be endless beef, but it's going to be, you know, if the guitar player has no clout, you're going to have to deal with it. You're that, you are that she ladies that's, that skinny dude who's wearing female jeans and shows up late to every show and never helps with anything, you're his bitch. So, guys, get on there. You need to start doing, if you're a guitar player and you get online, start doing, um, you could do those angles where, like, 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 get your lips like this, you know, and then, and then, like, shred, do some pentatonic shit. That doesn't have to be good. You're playing, if you care about your playing and you're making videos, your cloud is going to be with 45-year-old overweight men constantly telling you about your tone is trash and they got a better tone in 1981. But real clout, you know, put on the, the cut out the V-neck, put on the V-neck, sit on your floor like that one dude and do the duck lips, solo over some pentatonic shit or... Um, do cover the melody from like Beyonce or some shit or like the baby, but on guitar, boom, you got followers. Boom. Lead singer doesn't treat you like your own. So really I was going to get serious and that's some serious shit. I was going to get a little more sentimental with this video, but that's today's lesson. And that's what I think about this. Mr. Pete, you Dave Navarro has got a fan base and that's what's really fucking you right now is you fucked with his fan base. And from everything I've ever watched with Dave Navarro, and I've been watching his videos and his interviews, his gear tours for forever. I, I do like Jane's Addiction. I'm not a super fan, but I do love uh, Got Caught Ceiling. And I love Dave Navarro. He's a great guitar player. Somebody I looked up to, still do look up to. So it's like, yeah, this is not going to end well for you. If it was just a nobody, you know, if the whole band was not original except for him and he hired replacements that nobody knew, this probably wouldn't be a story. But you fuck with Davey and his guitar player fan base can come after you. So um, if you got problems with your band, problems with your work, problems with your teammate, don't let it build up. Don't let it fester until you freak out unless you just don't care. Then do whatever you want. 
Um, communication is key. I was going to talk about this more from a substance abuse angle, but it's really not clear if that's his problem. And from this video and making this, I don't think that that's his problem. So I'm not going to sit here and speculate and say things that I don't know about. I will say that it definitely looks like he just, whatever was causing him an issue, he let it get to him and he burst out and had a fit on stage. So don't let that happen, guys. Talk to your therapist, talk to your girlfriend, talk to your boyfriend, talk to your whatever, talk to your dog, talk to me. If you got a problem, you just want to vent it, shoot me a DM, leave me a comment. I'll talk to you. I'll be your friend. You know, I don't have friends, so I'll be there for you. I know what it's like. I'm going to record this shit for you. Where's this fucking... There's a fly in here. I see the motherfucker. He's got to be in here. Okay, as promised, here's some extra reactions. I just typed in live music band fight on YouTube. Singer attacks drummer during live show. We may have reacted to this one way back in the day if you've been following. I can't remember, though. Lead singer beats up drummer. Yo, damn. Buddy out of here throwing the guitar. Guitars are way too expensive to be doing all that. Oh, he threw it. Our drummer's failing it tonight. I don't know what the problem is, but Yo, that's so wang. <laughs> that's so wang to me. Yo, our drummer fucking sucks tonight. I don't know what the fuck his problem is. <laughs> I'm gonna finish the set by myself. I'll play a few songs, whatever you want to hear, but I can't. <laughs> Yo, bro, this is so wet. <laughs> yeah, we hold on, guys. We gotta get this fucking idiot. <laughs> bro, this is every drummer's nightmare. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We all have bad shows, but I. That's Oh, sorry, everyone. We all have bad shows, but you just fucking suck, dude. Get the fuck off the kit. I'll play this shit acoustic. <laughs> I don't think I get it. If if I I don't know if I was if it was a big if I was a big deal and selling a thousand tickets, I guess I could understand that. If he sold, if all these people here are specifically here to see him and they bought tickets for him, I I get it maybe, but it I don't it didn't really sound that bad. I mean. It didn't really sound that bad. Damn, dude. My drummer's failing it tonight. I don't know what the problem is, but I'm going to finish the set by myself. I'll play a few songs, whatever you want to hear, but I can't do it. Sorry. Sorry, I just can't fucking play with this idiot anymore. Sorry, we all have bad shows, but that's embarrassing. I can't handle it. Damn. Yo. Yeah, don't break his stuff, bro. I apologize, but there's a certain amount of I can take. Oh, yeah, you ruined the show, bro. Yeah, he wasn't bad. The drummer was not bad enough for all that. He just ruined the show. Oh, my gosh. Woo, boy, that's something to say. That's every drummer's nightmare right there. All right, let's watch another one. All right, we're going to do Not Just Fights Cringe, I think. This is Finn's live music. This one is Live Music is Good. I have no idea what this video is, but I see Vince Meal killing it. Yo! Yo! Dude. Somebody just ran their golf cart into that band. Bro, these dudes are old too. That's fucked. Dude, shout out. Prayers to those guys. Yo, dude, they might have hurt that guy. All right, let's start this one over again. I, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Is this on purpose? I've been there. Fuck! <laughs> Poor guy. I've been there. Hold on. Fucking fuck me Stop it. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I like that. Hey, 
<laughs> this video, yeah, I see why this title live music is good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a video. This title of this video is gonna be live music is live. Yeah, dude, Dave Matthews scatting on the beat. I don't know about all that. I fuck with these like two. Uh, hold on. Before I address this Elton slander, which I don't fucking tolerate, I fuck with these girls. I would go to this show. That's a five dollar ticket. That's a five dollar ticket. If they do that for forty five minutes, that's a five dollar ticket. With a good, the good open, like a comedian or a painter opener. To the lava. Ooh, I've seen that one before. That one. All right, we just watched that one. All right, that's all y'all get for free. All right, thanks for watching the video. If you made it this far, go to Earl Stress, check out the live show, check out the music. I love you.